Hi, and welcome to our training video on sources of variability. In this video, part A, we'll talk about what are sources of variability and provide you with the framework for considering them. This is based on the OMRAC Handbook Filter 2.2. In the Filter 2.2, we're asking groups in the instrument selection phase to identify and manage sources of variability in their scores. What are they? Well, there are these factors that can cause differences in the score that we get on an instrument or how an instrument performs in terms of their measurement properties. Error in measurement is something that we always expect. It could be random day-to-day -day variability in a score or consistently higher scores from one rater or one machine over another. We always try to reduce error, both types of error, to try to improve what we can be able to see through this outcome measurement instrument score. So identifying this error or these sources of variability and trying to deal with them will reduce the impact of that error and improve our outcome measurement in terms of precision or accuracy. So what are we asking? We're asking you to think back to the October 2020 session where we had lessons learned for OMRAC from imaging outcomes. And lesson two was about understanding sources of variability that can impact your score. And in this, we realized that imaging outcomes have been doing this for a long time. They've dealt with inter-machine differences in readings. They've dealt with differences between the technicians gathering data. So they've been thinking about this a lot. And what we're asking the rest of the whole or the whole OMRAP community to do is think about these sources of variability. Are there extraneous reasons for a given score in a given testing situation? And think about the implications of that source of variability and ways you might need to manage, control, or adjust for that extra variability. We took the example of bone density testing. Two technicians may get different readings on the same patients. Two different BMD machines, perhaps different brands, could give us different readings of bone density in the same patients. Our patients with scoliosis are more difficult to position for accurate BMD readings, so they might have less consistency in their readings compared to patients without scoliosis. So you can see that the sources of variability can come from different places. So we can have imaging technique or technician issues or patient issues that are the source of a source of variability. And then we offer more specific components of that source of variability to think through. And when this is done for DEXA, a recommendation can come out saying, this is how we think you can improve your acquisition and interpretation of data from a DEXA scan. So it could be calibrating the equipment each morning or using a standardized process. Now, sources of variability also extend into all other types of outcome measurement. And that's what we're asking groups, for example, with patient reported outcomes to think through these different sources of potential variability and see if it is at play with the, with the instrument that you're considering. You might think, how does this relate to the working group on contextual factors that's been doing a tremendous amount of work? Well, sources of variability are types of contextual factors. Their influence is directly on the measurement score, the measurement properties of the instrument being considered. So in Sabrina May Nelson's work on contextual factors, these would be the measurement affecting contextual factors, where the impact is on the measurement properties of the tool that are being considered in the OMRAC filter. So they could make it that one instrument passes the filter and another one does not because of the source of variability. Now we'd ask you to pause here if you wish and review what are contextual factors videos. If this is new to you, the work on contextual factors and specifically the measurement affecting contextual factors. Once we identify them, what can we do about it? Well, there are several, several solutions that are suggested in D'Agostino et al. in 2021. Standardizing protocols, calibrating equipment, only using one machine for a clinical trial if you can't 
figure out how to reduce the error between machines, training readers, or using the mean of repeated measurements as your outcome score rather than just a single measurement. And this type of solution is listed down the right-hand column of Table 2 in D'Agostino's paper. What we're asking you to do, as well as thinking about the solution, is to check and see if the solution has improved the situation for your group and your outcome measurement instrument. So solutions are trying to reduce error, give us a clearer picture of the true score. So they should be evaluated to see if they have done that job. And to accommodate this, filter 2.2 has a new measurement property added. It's called intermethod reliability. So when you're doing things like technician training, does the interrater reliability improve? So intermethod reliability is like an umbrella term for all the different things that you might want to test as sources of variability. Calibration of the machines. Can we get comparable scores from a standard set of subjects on different machines? That would be the intermachine reliability. And is it good or excellent? So in this video, we've tried to provide you with a framework for thinking about sources of variability and thinking about the benefits of addressing these to improve your outcome measurement. In part B in the training, we do have a little bit more practical examples of how, what this would look like. Thank you.